you want to make some cookies? No. Hi flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm and today I am starting more seeds. I have a huge stack of seeds that I need to start. We are between seven and eight weeks before my last frost of the season, which means I have a ton of stuff to start. So let me first show you what I'm planning on starting today. Honestly, there's more than this right here, but these are just the, the seed packets that I went through. Um, my family is working outside cleaning up, doing some spring cleaning because you know how things go, like cardboard boxes are left outside, shovels and rakes and things are all over the place. So they're trying to tidy up the area. But I'm inside doing this. You're gonna hear them hammering away at something. Brad's probably working on the tractor to be honest with you. So anyway, I'm gonna be starting nasturtium today. So I have a few different varieties of nasturtium. I, nasturtium, I think I have another packet inside as well. But I have this beautiful Yeti nasturtium, gorgeous yellow color. I'm gonna be starting my nasturtium in 50 plug trays, 50 cell plug trays, which are right here. They do not like to have their roots disturbed. I'd like to sell some at my seedling sale, and I'd also like to have some ready to go in the ground because they are great for a number of reasons. They're great because they're an edible flower and they're fantastic, but they're also great because they deter bugs from being on the things you don't want them on. They attract the bugs to them instead of having them on your other plants. So nasturtium is great. So then I have this one right here. Would you look at that? Now this one is called Cherry rose jewel and obviously I got these from Baker Creek. Let me go see if I can find that one that's inside. I knew I had one more. This is the tall trailing mix. This is a whole bunch of different colors. I grew this one last year and I loved it but I didn't have great germination. So I'm a little hesitant to put them in the 50 cell plug trays because if only half of them germinate that is a huge waste of space. So I might do my tray germination on this and then just individually put them in. Yeah that's what I'm going to do. So a way that I'm going to do that is by using um, Chinese takeout. We rarely get takeout or pizza or Chinese or anything like that. I cook most of the time, but I get excited when we do because I get to collect these. So these are basically miniature humidity domes and I just fill this with dirt, put the nasturtium seeds there, cover them with a light layer of dirt, put the top on and forget about it because you check in what, 10, 15 days, see what's germinating transplant the ones that are germinating out into your 50 cell plug tray and that way you don't have wasted space. I love to use this method. Gallardia, this is an Indian blanket one and then this one is a, a burgundy one. It's a geo packet so there's no, there's no point in even showing it to you but <laughs> it's a burgundy. It looks like this but it's burgundy. And then I have uh, my mahogany splendor hibiscus I'm starting today and then my dianthus. I'm starting my dianthus. They're recommended six to eight weeks before your last frost and I am, like I said, we're nearing week 13 and my last frost is week 20. So I go by weeks of the year when it comes to when I start seedlings. So the middle of May is my last frost, which is week 20. Week 20 is between like May 15th and May 23rd and that's my average last frost. So I count back from week 20 to see when I should be starting things. So right now we are in week 12, almost week 13. So I'm starting things that need to be started six to eight weeks ahead of time. So sorry if that's confusing. I, I did do a video <laughs> about, well, it, it was a live stream uh, explaining my process. Perhaps I need a little bit more in-depth video, but anyway, that's my process. So we are nearing week 13. So I'm starting things that say eight weeks away, six to eight weeks away. The Shabad series. I am doing Marie Shabad Dianthus. I have a bunch more Dianthus. Let me get those. I'm not organized. I haven't even looked at like what's in here yet to see what I'm starting. <laughs> Shabad Jean du Noir. Shabad La France. So I'm doing the Dianthus, which is carnations, guys. Dianthus and carnations, they're the same thing. I'm starting this Euphorbia from Florette. I believe this is the green and yellow. It's not snow on the mountain. It's a green and yellow. Uh, gorgeous euphorbia. I'm starting my cress, but guys, I am direct sowing this today. So I'm going to be going outside and direct seeding several things because we can. You're supposed to direct seed all these things when the soil is workable. My soil is workable, so it's no longer frozen. I can I can direct seed a bunch of things. I'll be doing a few other things today. I'll go over those with you. I'm starting Sweet Annie indoors today. I'm starting Mountain Mint. I'm also starting a couple of varieties of basil, and uh, it's a little early to start basil for my flower farm, but it's not too early to start basil for my seedling sale. People like to have those large basil plants when they're buying them from the seedling sale. I am also starting Craspedia, 
I had to say that slow because I always say crapsedia because I, I mix it up. I mix the P and the S. It's craspedia, not crapsedia. I hope it's not crapsedia. <laughs> Buplurum, Buplurum, I will direct so today. So excited to get out there. So, oh, no, this is La France Chabot. I already showed you that. The straw, more straw flowers. I started some last week. I'm starting more now. And then uh, Amobium, winged, everlasting. I don't know if it's winged or winged, everlasting, but I think winged, everlasting is fun to say. So I'm saying that. Now this, this is another filler. They're all filler plants. And then here, oh, here's another Dianthus. This is the one that I grew last year. This is the Shabad Picochi Fantasy Mix. And uh, it was fantastic. I did not use it, however, because it did have a little bit of a thrip issue toward the end of the season. So I decided to let the thrips live there because they weren't bothering anything else. So I sacrificed my Dianthus last year for the, to the thrips. And now I feel like I'm better prepared to handle the thrips. I have some nematodes that I'm gonna be putting into the ground and all this other stuff. And I'm, I'm prepared this year for the thrips. I was not prepared last year. What else do we have? That's it out of this packet. So I need to get going because that's a lot of seeds to start. And I'm also starting my dahlias from seed today. So this right here is my stuff for soil blocking. I'm not soil blocking uh, right away. Ooh. I will be very soon, but I'm gonna be doing, um, this bucket over here has my Lambert germination mix. I'm gonna bring that up on the table. Ooh. Okay, so for this, this is what I'm gonna do the nasturtium in and I'll just pick the cherry rose. I'll just say it's cherry rose. And ooh, I'm gonna put, this is pre-moistened Lambert germination mix. Just gonna put a nice layer there. Not too much, you don't want too much. Take in this, this says 25 seeds is the minimum. So we'll see how many there are. I'm actually going to count them because I am curious how much they actually send. One, two, three, four. There's actually 47 seeds in here. That's awesome. So the minimum is 25. They always overpack them. Let me tell you, I bought San Marzano seeds from Baker Creek and it said minimum 25 seeds. There were 100 seeds in each one of those packets. So that's fantastic. You get more than what you paid for. So now I'm just going to lightly cover these, put the top on, label it, because you know that I don't label properly. I better get a label. So even if you don't order takeout often, maybe your friends do, have them save the takeout for you and you can use them for little germination chambers. Okay, so we have, today is three, 27, my cousin Don's birthday. Happy birthday, Don. See you later. He's also my neighbor. My, my neighbor and my cousin, I love you. We have nasturtium. Hey, are those new? Do I need to order more? How, how, can you send me a link of what I should be ordering? You're the best. You need a haircut, dude. Told you. His hair is like four inches tall. Done. Next. That was my only takeout container. <laughs> Actually, I, I have hot peppers and one downstairs, um, but I didn't. I don't have any more because Brad Pitt took the leftovers to work and threw them out at work. Boy needs to be shamed. Okay, so I went downstairs and I got some more tools. This is, let's see, strawberries. This was a container for strawberries. Used it last year. I think I germinated lavender in this last year. I know it has holes in the bottom, but that's okay. Same idea. Sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. Let's go with the lemon Yeti. I'm not counting that one because I'm lazy. Okay. Little bit on top. Coverage up. Oh, look. Oh no, right here it says Gomfrina 324, which was last year. So, oh shoot, I should start my Gomfrina today. I need to start my Gomfrina today. <laughs> okay, so right here I've got 
a hundred nasturtium plants germinating. Yes. I also have these four packs. I'll probably just use them. Okay, before I get into the soil blocking, this winged mobium specifically says to put into 72 plug trays. I've never grown this before, so I'm gonna follow the recommendations on the Johnny's seed packet and not soil block. I am going to put them in a 72 plug tray. Just happened to have some right here. And, oh gosh, oh, oh, I'm excited about these ones. So these are from Bootstrap Farmer. I bit the bullet and I paid more. And oh my goodness, the quality of this is unbelievable. I don't even know how to show you how sturdy they are, but there are pictures online of like putting a brick here and having it not even like bend <laughs> or bend down, but not break. They're, uh, well, this is a 50 cell plug. And this one I just got from Amazon, but like it's very flimsy. The sides break often. I've actually gotten paper cuts or plastic cuts, if you will, by the sides ripping just because they're not very strong. You have to replace those often. Now these, they're supposed to last you for years. I and mean, it is thick plastic. I couldn't even break it if, I probably could if I really tried. But I'm just saying, it's not something that I can go out and buy like 200 of this year because they are more expensive. I think I paid $50 for a 10 pack, which means they're about $5 a piece as opposed to the other ones that you can get for a lot less. But if they're gonna be lasting me a lot longer and they're much better quality, I'd rather, you know, every year buy a 10 pack of these and then, you know, add up my, get my stock together. Anyway, yeah, so these are Bootstrap Farmer. I actually bought them on Amazon. Bootstrap does have an Amazon account and you could just write, buy it right through Amazon. And it is from the company. The box that came in the mail was right from Bootstrap Farmer. Oh God, I feel like they're deeper too. Like I feel like they're, Maybe they're not. It's hard to tell. Let me. No, I think they're the same. They're the same depth. They just feel deeper. They also taper off nicely on the bottom as opposed to, say, this one that is uh, a lot. Well, I guess, how can you tell? <laughs> See the tops? This one's a very wide, it's square all the way down. This one tapers off at the bottom, so you're using less soil, but you still have the same amount of root room. Enough about the trays. I've been wanting to buy these for years. I believe Jess from Roots and Refuge uses these. A lot of people use them. They're just quality, quality trays. The nasturtium that I started, I do not need to put that on a heat mat. That will germinate at 65 degrees and my basement grow room, my new space, is sitting pretty at 68 degrees. So I will not need to put them on heat mats, which is great. The fewer things I need on my heat mats, the better, because that is, I mean, that's like boardwalk and park place, right? It's hot real estate. So this has a really high germination rate. So I'm not gonna be putting that many in a cell. There are a thousand seeds though. So <laughs> I imagine they're quite tiny because, oh yeah, they're itty bitty. I'm gonna get my toothpick. Oh boy. They're tiny and they're the same color as the soil. Okay, so I have all of the amobium like, it sounds like emodium. <laughs> I'm like trying to make sure I don't say emodium AD. This is emobium, which is a beautifulness thing. Anyway, it says to lightly cover with vermiculite to help um, germination. So what we're gonna do is lightly cover with vermiculite. So when you do lightly cover with vermiculite, make sure that you're lightly covering with the vermiculite because it does expand when it gets wet. And if something is only supposed to be lightly covered and you put too much on, it might drown it out once it gets wet. Label. Germination on this is 65 to 70 degrees too. So I think I could just throw it on the floor downstairs and it will be fine. Yes. Let's go. I wrote it and I forgot to stick it on the tray. All right, now I think I'm gonna start all right, well actually, I'll start some dahlias in this because I have a leftover four pack. So my sister bought me some dahlia seeds for Christmas and she got duped. Let's just call it what it is. She ordered what was told to her to be blue 
dahlias. There's no such thing as a blue dahlia. It was a clearly photoshopped picture, but she just saw it and got excited and thought I would love it. So they are dahlia seeds though. Like you can see they're dahlia seeds. I know what dahlia seeds look like, but they're not blue and white. So we're gonna start some of those and see what comes up. I mean, who even knows? It, it just says dahlia seeds, blue and white, easy grow, non-GMO. Her heart was in the right place. <laughs> anyway, I don't even know if it's a tall variety, a short variety, because there are some varieties of dahlias that only grow six inches tall. So I'm going to put a few in this four pack and I'll grow some and my mom will grow some and it will be great. And I'm gonna call them Jessica dahlias because my sister Jessica bought them for me. Jessica. Ooh, getting a tall pile going. I don't know if you can see that, but I got. Oh, I'm gonna lift it up. The strawberry container on the bottom with the nasturtium, the Chinese takeout with the nasturtium, and then these four packs with nasturtium, nasturtium, and Jessica dahlias. Ooh. Those all have to go downstairs. But in the meantime, I think I'll start soil blocking, or is there anything else that I can do in the trays? I think I'll do the other dahlias in the 50 plug tray. I'll just do another set of them. Oh, son of a toothpick. Something just fell out. Lost some seeds, they're zinnia seeds. Here's the open. Here's the culprit. Canary bird out of the cage. Canary bird zinnias. Oh my god, there they all are at the bottom. Bad, 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 bad. Where are my dahlias? So I was prepping this tray to get it ready for dahlias, and I just went over Erin's from Florette, her new Discovering Dahlias book. I just went upstairs and I was reading her How to Start from Seed section, and I think it's too early for me. It says specifically four to six weeks before your last frost. And it said if started too early, they won't transplant well. So I'm gonna wait a couple weeks on my dahlias because I don't want them to get too big. And my flower friend Gina says that they do grow tubers rather quickly. So I don't want them to get too big for this plug tray. So I'm gonna hold off for two more weeks and then I'll start my dahlias from seed. I am gonna continue to grow the Jessica ones though. Uh, that doesn't bother me. I just don't want to do the majority of them and have them get too large and then not have them be successful. So I'm gonna wait. I'm glad I had Aaron's book as a reference because I really want to start them, but I have so many other things to start that I'm not worried about it. So I'm gonna leave this tray, set it aside, find something else to use it for, and I'm gonna start soil blocking. So I have about a half bag of Vermont uh, Fort V compost in here, but I'm gonna go ahead and put more in it and get fresh water because it's starting to uh, get a little bit dried out here. So I'm going to, I usually have a pair of scissors over here. Where'd they go? I'm gonna start with half the bag. Can you have a cookie? Didn't you already eat a cookie? You're asking me if you can have a cookie while holding my Cookie Monster soil blocker? No. I made chocolate chip cookies today I and... I did have a cookie. You had one cookie. Had one you would cookie. like another cookie? Oh, yeah. You would like one more cookie? 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 Okay, you can have one more cookie. Cookie! So when I mix together my, so my soil blocking mix, I use uh, warm water. And the water that I have in this bucket right here is cold. So I'm gonna toss it outside, bring it in, in the bathroom, in the bathtub, get warm water and come out here and, and mix up my mix. Ew. Save a little bit at the bottom. Woo, steamy. My mom was doing it the other day. She's like, it's like making dough. She's right, it really is. X, you wanna make some cookies? No. It sticks together when you squeeze it. It's not too wet. It's exactly what I want. Hysterical. My mother has never really been, I mean, she, got, she had gardens when I was a kid and stuff, but, uh, and she does have a small flower bed, but I've created a monster. <laughs> 
she just texted me. She just bought a bunch of seeds and spring bulbs at the store. <laughs> so I plan on going to her house and um, cutting, like putting in a cut flower garden for her and for my grandmother. I'm so excited and she's so excited. She's for the first time ever started seeds inside this year and uh, she's got plug trays and humidity domes and um, I'm, I love it. <laughs> I ran out of trays, so I went outside because the snow has revealed many things, including trays that I left outside. So this I just found, and then I found two of these. Super exciting. These are perfect for soil blocks. You just put it in a plug tray, and uh, you can fit, what, what did I do the other day? I had five rows of three, so you can fit one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, you can fit a ton of soil blocks on these. So I'm gonna do those. And then I think I'm gonna go outside and direct sow some things before I start uh, putting the seeds in these soil blocks. I just quickly finished the soil blocking that I had left to do. And uh, a lot of people have been asking me how far, which let me try to hit the light right, right? So that's full of beautiful soil blocks. So this holds a 300 soil blocks. People are asking me how far one bag of Vermont compost will go. So the bags themselves are $24.95. If you spend a certain amount on gardener supply, you get free shipping. So I always try to spend that amount. I think it's $125. So I have, here's the bags, because they're not large bags. They're not, they're 20 quarts. So $24.95 for 20 quarts, which is super pricey when it comes to soil like this, but it's the only thing that holds up in soil blocks for me. I've made my own mix, but I've never found anything that holds up and does as well as Fort B. It has everything in it that you need. Anyway, so what I figure out is I just had about a whole bag in here and I just did 1300 and something odd soil blocks between these two 300 plug tray or 300 trays and then a few of the tra other trays that I use that hold 240 each and I still have I would say at least a third of the soil left I could easily do another couple of trays with this so I'm guessing you could do about 2,000 soil blocks with one bag and maybe I'll uh, you know actually do that experiment one day just dump a whole bag in there and just continue to make them until I can no longer make them and see exactly how many soil blocks I can make out of one bag of Fort V. But 2,000 seedlings for $24.95 worth of potting mix, I guess it's not as bad as when you think of it that way. It's not like you're filling 72 plug trays. Imagine how much soil you would take to fill 72 plug trays with one bag. Like that would be crazy. But when you're doing soil blocking, you don't use as much soil. And it actually says on the bag, designed for soil blocks. You will not find that on anything else. Designed for soil blocks. If you're farming on a larger scale, you also have the option of buying it in a much larger size. I believe they sell it by the pallet. Uh, so you would pay less if you bought it by the pallet as opposed to the bag. So, so far I've gone through four bags of Vermont compost and I have six more on the way. I do have a lot of stuff to start at the four week mark and I do have a lot at the six week mark. So the four to six week mark is kind of the busiest actually. This week and those weeks are, they're very similar. So I know it's not going to go to waste if I buy six more bags. So what I decided to do right now is go outside with what I'm direct sowing because I can sit here at night and, and just seed trays and seed trays and seed trays, but I only have so much daylight to get in the, the stuff that needs to be direct sown. So I'm gonna take that stuff outside now. Still kind of chilly out and my hair's still kind of wet from showering, so I had to put my hat on, but this is the area where I'm gonna direct seed right now. This is a new bed area. I had some roses in here last year. This is inside the deer fence. I'm just gonna try doing some of my direct seeded stuff and here's what I have. Oh, this is what I'm using. This is called the Weed Faux. This is what Lisa Mason Ziegler uses. She recommends it through her course. And it's really good for just like direct seeding, but it's also good for like weeding down those rows. And now direct seeding is something you don't use landscape cloth for because like it's direct seeding. You just don't do that. So I'm direct seeding several things. One might be stretching it. I'm gonna try Orlea. I don't know if it's warm enough. You're supposed to direct sow that after a chance of a hard frost. We still do have chances of hard frosts, but what I'm gonna do with, or what I'm gonna do here. So we're expecting about an inch of rain tomorrow, up to an inch of rain. It's foolish to direct seed when you're about to get an inch of rain, in my opinion, because all of the seeds could be washed away. I have a pile of two by fours right there. So I'm going to 
put the seed in the ground and cover them with the two by fours. And then after the storm passes tomorrow, just take the two by fours off. Just maybe it'll help me. I don't know. I have the day. I don't have days all the time in order to get all these jobs done. So I have the time now. I'm gonna try it. It's an experiment. I'm only gonna use a little bit of seed. If I fail, I fail. If I succeed, yay. So I'm going to get the two by fours and lay them out and make sure I have nice straight rows, which is kind of funny because I never have nice straight rows. Who am I kidding? So in this first row, I'm going to do two different kinds of crests. I think they're two different kinds of crests. One says Persian crests and the other one says emerald beads crests. This one is Lepidium sativium and this one is Lepidium satatum. So slightly different crests and I am going to label. I have labels and garden markers and I'm going to make sure that I have everything labeled because that's been haunting me. Next up is Buplurum. I'm probably gonna do this whole row of Buplurum. This time I'm not gonna use the hoe because these are 10 inches apart. I'm going to use my fingers to poke a little hole. Actually do them a little closer together. I'm gonna do them like four inches apart. Now this is Orlea. I already have some of this started in the basement, but I'm attempting to do it here. It says direct seeding is recommended. Sin, sin, fin, so thinly, cover lightly, after danger of heavy frost. Let's just figure it out. I'm gonna try it anyway. We'll see what happens. Now, all of these are gonna have succession plantings. I have enough room here to do a second row of all these. I just didn't wanna go crazy, know that I'm expecting that rain tomorrow. I just wanted to get something in the ground while I have time today. I don't think this two by four is gonna help much. <laughs> it's got a lower little, little indentation here in the earth, but that's okay. So these last three seed packets I'm starting are Larkspur. And now I did Larkspur last year and I think I did it too late because these do not germinate well when the soil temperatures get above 55 degrees and I don't think I sowed them early enough. So hopefully this is the perfect time to put them in the ground. So I have Galilee Pink Perfection, Fancy Pink with White Bee, and I have Galilee Blue, which is the only Larkspur that actually grew and flowered for me last year. I did not have any luck with, with the white and this Fancy Pink with White Bee is new for me this year. So I'm going to use the last three boards that I have down um, for those very excited about this. Larkspur is just, it's really dreamy. It's one of those gorgeous, I, I don't know, I think of like an English cottage garden when I think of Larkspur. You guys hear that? Birds. <laughs> oh, I love it. So I'm just coming over here to look at the ranunculus that I planted the other day and uh, wow, it looks fantastic. I feel like it's grown already. I don't know if that's the case, but once they get in the ground where they're supposed to be, man, they just take off. So far, nothing with the chickens. They haven't tried again. I think it's only when I'm over here they get excited and they want to see what I'm doing and then they see the green and they want to eat it. Little buggers. There are some more things that I will direct sow. Uh, I definitely am going to be direct sowing some Bells of Ireland, but I also have some of that started inside uh, Centuria Bachelor Buttons. I was going to do that today, but I just can't, I can't find my seed packet. It's missing. Um, I, I wasn't a huge fan of the Bachelor Buttons last year. They were pretty, they looked nice, but they were a pain to harvest. They, they just got all tangly and I ended up just cutting them all down once because I was so annoyed with the fact that they were all tangled up together. But they, you know, I thought I'd give them another try. One more try, I'll give them one more try. 
I think, I think tomorrow I'll take you guys on a little tour of the farm because I mean, it's spring guys. You should see my tulips are coming up. The daffodils are looking great. All the new ones that I planted, everything is just bursting to life. And I know a lot of you guys have already experienced your tulips and your daffodils, but I live up way where it's cold and it just happens a little later for you, for us anyway. I mean, the peonies are poking up out of the ground everywhere. Maybe I'll do a little, a little tour of the farm, uh, you know, a, a mid spring tour. Wait, it's wicked early spring. It's like the first week of spring. So the first week of spring tour of the farm. And I think I'm going to, I'm going to be planting some bare roots as well uh, with you guys pretty soon. So anyway, I'm excited. The, the irises that I planted last year, they're coming up. They're strong. My garlic's up. Things look good and I cannot wait. I can't wait. All of that hard work that I put in, you know, the hundreds of hours planting last year and not to mention the money, but the hundreds of hours and all of the blood, sweat and tears, you know, seeing things burst to life in the spring, it just makes it so worth it. And sharing it with you guys makes it even more special. So thank you so much for watching and joining me on this adventure. So thank you, we'll see you soon. Look at that. Did I drop one? I dropped one. Who is dead popping in the window? What? What? <sighs> Fern's very needy. She's very, very needy. What? What's the matter? What? If you could jump on this table, you would, I swear. Very needy. Lepidium sedativium. Blah, blah, blah. <sighs> oh, you know what I hate about seed packets? They get stuck on the stickiness all the time. My eyes are so sensitive. This is why I wear sunglasses all the time because I can't even look at the camera. It's cloudy and I can't open my eyes. I don't think I can accurately <laughs> explain my love for these dogs. I love you so much, yo. Look at that tail. Look at that tail. Hi, Fern. Yes, you're so pretty. Why are you being shy? Why are you being shy? Never you, Fern. You're never shy. Yo, are you being shy? <laughs>